Joining us now to discuss the legal battle surrounding the election results is UIC Law School Professor Stephen Schwinn. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Can you uh, discuss uh, the president's legal approach? In some states, he wants the vote to continue. In some states, he wants it to stop. Does this make sense? Well, on the face of it, no, it doesn't make any sense. You either want the vote to continue or you want the vote to stop. You can't really have it both ways. What President Trump and his team seem to be doing here is challenging vote counts in states that they don't like, but allowing vote counts in states that they do like. And so I, just on the face of this, it doesn't seem to make any sense. Uh, back in 2000, it was all about recounts, and that's how it made it up to uh, the Supreme Court. We've heard talk about this going to the Supreme Court. What would be the path for that to even happen? Yeah, a terrific question. So there may be a number of paths, and the most obvious is this outstanding case that we just heard about from Pennsylvania regarding the late coming ballots that were mail-in ballots, but nevertheless accepted by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to come in up to three days after the election. The Supreme Court split 4-4 on that case, but held open the opportunity that the case could go back to the Supreme Court and determine the validity of those late coming ballots. A couple of the other cases may look like they could go to the Supreme Court as well, but it's important to remember that so many of these issues turn on state law and the Supreme Court it's going to be loath to intervene in cases that turn on state law. When there are, re well, first of all, what constitutes a recount? And I know it's different in, in, in different states, but what's generally the rule of thumb? And um, does that end up in, in resulting in thousands of ballots that are different or just hundreds or dozens? Yeah, another great question. So states differ. This goes state by state as to what triggers a recount. In some states, there's a threshold for an automatic recount. In other states, a candidate can request a recount if there's a diff if there's a small enough difference in the final uh, in the final vote count. In Wisconsin, we've seen the Trump the Trump presidency ask for a recount when there's less than a one percent difference in the vote count, and he's fully entitled to do that. I don't expect that this is going to change the results, though. The numbers are just too big in Wisconsin, and we don't really see changes in recounts flipping elections with that big of a change, that big of a margin between the candidates. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Obviously, everyone's keeping an eye on it. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. Hey, Paul.